here is on time, but the person must say that they need to use the bell. And in any case, I'm very happy to introduce Adam Sikura, who will tell us about fundamental properties of scan algebras of services. Thank you. All right, so this is a giant trying to work with user scheme. Basics and let let n be an oriented manifold, <coughs> possibly with bandai. Let R be commutative ring <coughs> with a specified uh, inductable element in it. <coughs> in N, which are framed and unoriented. Including also the M descent. All right, so then uh, you can consider linear combinations of such <coughs> uh, So this is a formal space and you quotient it by by the Kaplan bracket scheme relations. Algebra 
and the product is given by L1 on top of L2. So you can stack links one on top of each other, extend this extends to multiplication, and this is an R algebra. So this is this is called skein algebra. So this talk will be about skein algebras. And, uh, and surprisingly, not that much is known about them, even though they are quite interesting objects. Uh, so let me, let me tell you a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more background, and why do we care about those things. And so maybe remark number one is that Notice that this trick wouldn't work for a generic free manifold because there's no notion of top and bottom. However, so in, so in for generic free manifold, this is not an algebra. However, if A is equal to plus minus one, then you can still define product in this scheme model. And how does that work? Well, you observe that. For, for simplicity, I'm just going to skip down the training, uh, drawing. Yeah, that's well, But they want to make unpleasant sounds. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so this is going to be a inverse, but this is going to be plus minus one. So, this is the same really as a inverse A. And what it means is this is going to be also this crossing. So this whole, well, there's a lot of reduction happening in this scale model. Really, links only preserve their homotopic uh, class. And um, it turns out, it turns out that, uh, that then the scale model really depends only on the fundamental group of M. And in fact, <coughs> in fact, what it is, is it, it turns out to be the coordinate ring of certain algebraic variety. And the variety is called the SL2C character variety of pi 1 of M. And what's that? Well, this is the moduli spaces of the space of representations of uh, pi 1 of M into SL2C. Uh, it's something which appeared uh, yesterday in um, yesterday in your talk uh, about uh, homotopy. It appeared, well, maybe not, but it appeared, for example, in Anton Alexeyev's talk. Uh, this is also one of the space of flat connections on M. And this is, <coughs> all right, maybe I should tell you right away that I'm speaking a little bit. Uh, this is slightly more of a complicated object because we need to treat that <coughs> as an algebraic scheme. So this may be a ring which is not reduced, which we may have some pockets. So this is a this is an old result of of users in mind, <coughs> and also in a weaker form, uh, there's a weaker form of this by Doug Bullock. So will you formulate it? Say again. Will you formulate it actually? In this talk? If I would define this object? No, formulate the statement. Of the main theorem? No. No, of this theorem. Well, this is the statement of the theorem. No, no, because you didn't tell us what exactly you mean. I mean, what are the need for this If I'm going to define the, 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 no, I'm not going to define it. I thought that was you. Okay. Hey, I can tell you. So, so, I mean, that, that would take a long time. So, you, yeah, but I, I think I mean, you know, we are familiar with the fact that uh, a priori, there's no reason to believe that this has no new properties. Okay. So, what is the statement? The statement is, <coughs> the statement is well, I, I can use fancy language. Okay, the yes. fancy language is that this is an algebraic scheme. Yes. And this is the ring of global sections of the structure sheet of that scheme. So no statement is made about reduced or unreduced or anything. No, no that's why, that's why. But it's basically like coordinating of character variety, but it may have new color elements. But in many cases we know there is no. 
But but you're saying that this is true whether they are nepotents or not. Yeah, this is always true. just divide by nepotence, but it is the easier for us to say. No, but that's why I'm asking. Can you formulate the statement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a true statement. Okay. If you understand the quotation marks, it is hundred percent state correct statement. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is a first comment. So what does it mean? So so scheme algebra is really the form. The form, you know, a coordinate ring of, uh, of SL2C character variety of F. Right, so since, since there's uh, you know, uh, a discussion about this, so let me just say again that this is case of all homomorphisms divided by conjugation. So by an action of SL2C. But frankly, this doesn't matter for this stuff. All right, so this is the first comment. Now, why do we care about scale algebras? Well, you can think of them as um, <coughs> uh, building blocks of uh, topological quantum field theorems. So, if f is closed, then the SU2 TQFT on level R of f is isomorphic, isomorphic with S of f at A being 4 art root of unity quotiented by R minus first Jones Benson Eidenbotter. You consider all combinations of links involving uh, Eidenbotter, Jones Benson Eidenbotter. Uh, you take this quotient and it turns out to be to be that. <coughs> and maybe even more um, furthermore and uh, S of F itself at A root of unity, those objects are really the quantum Teichmuller spaces. Uh, and Francis Bonahon has several papers with his collaborators relating uh, well, those are algebras, the quantum Teichmuller spaces. Right. So, you know, this is. Uh, this is one of the reasons, I guess, why why Greg uh, uh, <coughs> was uh, was disappointed that uh, nobody mentioned scheme models in his talk. Because somewhere in the background, those things appear. All right. <coughs> yeah. So as I said, I'm going to talk about those scheme algebras. And surprisingly, surprisingly, little is known about them. So. Quite a lot, quite a lot. So this means non-zero zero divisors. It's a so in other words, it's a domain. Then scale algebra of surface F has no zero zero divisors. So I could call this domain, but I cannot call this domain because this is not a million. I don't think that I think you're missing another little note. Yes. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> and unfortunately the standard terminology is that zero zero is zero divisor. So I have to use the M Z Yes. 
And of course, of course, because this is von Abelian, I should say neither left nor right zero divisors. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And the second theorem I will now prove is if n to the n minus 1 is not zero divisor for any n, then we know what the center is of the scale algebra. Mm -hmm. Well, it's easy to guess what is in the center. What's in the center are links which are parallel to the boundary. Um, well, it's kind of, I think, obvious that if I consider this link here, so this would be a cross cross i, and we consider this link here, then it, it doesn't bother anybody, no matter what's inside, it will commute to everything. So, and in fact, it turns out that this is the entire center. The center is um, <clears throat> well, I could write it. I could write it like this. It's a polynomial ring on certain links where L i is parallel. To I boundary component of L and say there is D of them. So let's consider closed F, and then this means that F is a, well, any closed uh, surface and oriented group will be connected somewhat RP2, and that's the genus, the number of those RP2. So this is not true for Kleinbach, it's 
it's an easy exercise. Well, even less true is even for for Arbitro. Okay. So. Okay, so let me make a comment to the for the experts. So the, the corollary for the experts is that for any surface F, oriented or not, orientable or not, other than RP2 and line bottle, and I guess, well, yeah. But the SL2 character variety of F, the SL2 character variety of F is reduced. What does that mean? Well, it means you can remove the quotation marks here. Okay, well, in other words, why? Because, well, those theorems imply that those scan algebras have no new potents. Right? And that's not obvious. So, in fact, uh, so this is a, for F oriented, there's a whole paper of, uh, of Charles and Marchais on the subject. Which uses some ideas from topological quantum field theory to prove it, and uh, and for F unoriented, this is new. It also proves <laughs> that those character varieties are irreducible, and so this again there is a there is a whole complicated proof of um, well I don't know if it's complicated but there is whole paper of this on the subject by Rapidchuk and his collaborators for, uh, for uh, Orientable F and there's another like, a paper by Kavash by another group of mathematicians <coughs> Kavash is it Kavash? Uh, I probably mispronounced it for Unoriented F Yes, Manish Kriegs, thank you Can you write the name? Of the Okay. So this is this is for this is the difference for oh, this name I can be for reduced and for irreducible. Rapinchuk. I feel guilty here because uh, there are some he has two other Russian collaborators. I, I guess Banish Krivitz here is another one. Yeah, be oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, I have his name, but... The problem with that is that in English translations, his name appears in the newspapers. And also, <coughs> Chernusov. Yeah, so combinations of these people with the uh, Reduced the orientable case, and then another group of these people, another group involving these people, did uh, the, the non orientable case. But if you don't know the stuff, you don't need to worry because this is just some applications to, to representation theory, which I will not need in this talk. So this is the penetrating knot. We definitely don't know. And this is true for XLM. The, the irreducible. It, this is true for SLM. The irreducibility is not. All right. So, so then uh, let's move towards giving you some idea how to prove those things. Well, it turns out that uh, it's actually better, the best uh, 
the, the, in order to prove it, it's useful to consider more general theorems. So what are those? All right, so first of all, let's go back from now on. F will be oriented. Because I will have no time to get back to the proof of this theorem. Um, so now, now let B be a finite set of base points on F. Specifically, it will be specifically one on each component of the boundary. Of course, uh, every link diagram will have canonical blackboard orientation, uh, blackboard framing, uh, blackboard framing. So this is really can be identified with that. So now, what is T of f? Well, T of f is tangle diagrams. Circles and arcs and ends of endpoints of arcs belong to boundary of F. Right? And then you can do the same gimmick. And so you can say now Through the basement, either. But it can move the endpoints on the boundaries of here. Thank you. But it cannot move also endpoints through each other, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so now why did I say algebra? Well, there is a product on that. I don't think this product was ever considered. And the product is as follows L1 times L2, I can say T1. Times T2 is T1 on top of T2. But then uh, I have to 
explain what happens with endpoints. Endpoints of P1 to the left of P2 in bundle of F minus B. Right? So basically, take a component of bundle of F. You have a base point here. The service is oriented, so the bundle is also oriented. So then you want uh, uh, of, course, of course the word whether it's left or right doesn't really matter for the proof. So you have some endpoints here coming from P1 and you have some endpoints here coming from P2. So it must be in that order. So this is well defined. Right. This is a scalar algebra, and of course, uh, of course, scalar algebra of F is lies inside of relative scalar algebra. Mm. Okay, so let's open this up. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so of course it depends what does it mean left. <laughs> so I should use other words. So let's put it oriented this way. So then, um, no matter how I do it. <laughs> okay, so you see, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so then you will see you want to go. Okay, yes, thank you. <clears throat> All right, well, so what's this algebra? Let's consider a trivial example. Well, the, I mean, actually, the first non trivial example. Which is this. Okay. So, what are. So, the, the elements are combinations of tangles in a disk. Okay. What's the basis of this? Well, it's easy to see that this uh, scalar algebra is spanned by crossing class matchings. Okay. Uh, so what does that? What's, what's that? Well, it's this is your base point. Uh, this is a crossing class matching. So. Uh, let me come back to, to this later on, but I claim that the entire those crossing less matches are linearly dependent, so that's a basis. But even the vector space basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's so I guess as an algebra, it's dependent by just one thing. Is that right? Uh, no. No? Uh, not necessarily. So, yeah. Well, the, well, first of all, it's a it's a it's an algebra basis, yes. But I think you're talking about generators now, yes. <laughs> um, so, as a vector space basis given by that, okay. So now, what is the multiplication here? Well, you can open those things up, yes. And um, if you open those things up, okay, that you have something like that. So multiplication is basically uh, stacking together crossing class matchings. Is actually, this this uh, this uh, concept is very popular right now in geometric representation theory. If you have some papers of Kovanov uh, involved in that and so on. Uh, all right. So then I want to I want to call I want to call these two guys primitive. So primitive means. But this is not equal t1 plus t2. This is not a product of two of, of two um, crossing less matchings. So then it's easy to see what's actually has an algebra. Well, this is a free, non free associative algebra on primitive. A crossing less. Yeah, 
first known community. <coughs> so this is this is this is big. You can see that already for the simple example. Unnecessarily big. We don't need really to deal with such large objects. All right. So then we do next thing. So now I want to reduce it to something smaller. Because I want to leave the crossing less matchings to combinatorialists. Right, so then I want to define the reduced relative scalar algebra. And what's that? So this is going to be R R S F and this is going to be reduced scale algebra F divided by a certain set of tangles, well, meaning by a certain submodule spanned by certain tangles. <laughs> Let me tell you what are those. Uh, tangles with a crossingless arc parallel. So in other words, you have a bundle of F. If you see an arc like that, then uh, this would be a tangle here. And you just uh, you just kill it, the third is zero in the reduced skein uh, uh, algebra. Perhaps so does it matter where the base point is? No. No, no. no. So they are all killed over there. Yeah, exactly. Maybe one comment. Uh, please don't be confused about this R. This R in front of S will never be the ring R. This is the uh, relative or reduced relative scale accurate. Yeah, so what happens is, so then, so for example then, uh, you know, reduced relative scale algebra of, that, of this is just going to be R because everything, the only diagram actually here in this algebra will be the empty diagram. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So, but obviously, these are bigger algebras for, for uh, the scale algebras themselves. All right. So, now we have the follow up theorem one kind, which says that uh, if R has no non-zero zero divisors, then R R S has no non-zero zero divisors. And theorem two prime, which says if a n minus one is not zero divisor for n a n, then the center of R R S of F. Can you guess what would be that? Well. Actually, to be this time will be trivial. It's generated by it's just R. So in other words, R. I could write it this way. R times identity. This is 
see you other times. So, yeah, so obviously, obviously, because we have an embedding of scale algebra into this. Well, yeah. So first of all, I claim that scale algebra F embeds into reduced relative scale algebra. Why? Well, certainly it embeds in the reduced scale, uh, relative scale algebra, and then the reduction will not will not really be a problem because the reduction doesn't really apply to any links. It not applies to to tangles. Okay, so so in particular, one prime implies y one, but two prime doesn't imply two. Because that's because the two prime doesn't imply. saying that you can it's easy to verify that this is actually this would be an ideal two-sided ideal so you really can consider myself and Westbury uh, later on, so it's just an alternative proof. And the theorem says that uh, S of F has basis composed So you can guess, I guess. So multi multi is just an embedding of this joint union, well, of a bunch of circles into F. And uh, none of them is contractible. Again, no. 
no contractible components. So I claim that this is a basis. These are bases of these two guys. And so it's easy to see that those sets span those algebras because you just resolve all the crossings and you get and eliminate anything which is contractible, you just uh, replace by a constant. Now, let me talk to you about the proof of linear independence of those guys. So, well, okay, so let me tell you, the, so conceptually what's happening here is, if you take Kaufman bracket scalar relations, then they are confluent. Uh, well, it's a little bit technical remark, if you don't know what is this, it's, that's okay. But there is this confluence theory, those scaling relations are confluent, and then the fact that these guys are bases follows from something which is called the diamond lemma um, in confluence theory. So th that's how we, we prove this result. And uh, anyway, the, those proofs extend from the closed case, from scaling algebra case, to this relative reduced scaling algebra. This is not, it's sort of an abstract nonsense, but, um, uh, but it's really not too difficult. So therefore, let's move, let's move on. So let's take this out of the way. Okay? So f is not that. Alright, so let f be of genus G with D boundary components. So how do you prove this theorem? Well, you consider which are simple, non-intersecting, not parallel to each other. And so they form, they, they would uh, cut F into three pairs of pens. Let's call those curves gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4 in some order. Now, 
it is, uh, I want also to now at the end, add curves which are parallel to the boundary. So this will be gamma phi. Right? And now I claim that <coughs> any such pen scale position defines a filtration on spin algebra. So how do we do that? Well, for any tangle T in the set of tangles in F, you can define weight W of T to be the sum of geometric intersections of numbers between T and gamma ice over all ice, as you can see them there. Okay. These are geometric intersection numbers. All right, so then let FW be a B subset or, or subspace, sub, sub module of RR. S of F spanned by T's with weight at most W. So this is a filtration of scheme of this uh, reduced symmetric scheme algebra. By geometric intersection, you mean minimal in all in isotopes? That's right. That's right. So, yes. So, yeah, the hidden fact here is that you can minimize those numbers at this, all at the same time. So, there's no controversy about this. Okay. Well, so this filtration has a very nice property. Yeah, let me say two more sentences. So one sentence is <laughs> the mark F W. If you look at them, if you restrict the algebra product to F W times F W prime, that this really lies in F W plus W prime. Well, because if you have two tangles. They have some intersection numbers, then in the product, the, those numbers will at most add up. So, this is an algebra filtration. So, then so then what? Well, whenever we have algebra filtration, you can consider the associated graded algebra. So, now we have another gap G R R S F, which is a just a sum of those portions going from 1 to infinity, actually from 0 to infinity. This will be just uh, trivial for minus 1. And now this is an algebra. Okay. So I have no time. Let me just quickly say, why do we do that? Well, this algebra is more manageable than those other algebras. So I claim that you can actually describe the complete the multiplication of this algebra in, al in kind of a, a concrete algebraic way. Okay. And things are not easy, and, and you know there's still actually a lot of work to, to get where I want to go from here, but this algebra is more manageable. And so you prove those two theorems, one and two, <laughs> for this algebra, and then you deduce them for the non-graded uh, scale algebras. All right. Yeah. Any questions? Yes? You told us about the general intercept. There was something about the generators. Well, I can tell you about generators. Uh,
well. And so you have. Well, okay. I can tell you more maybe during the break. But. Um, <coughs> all right. It, basically, if you have a surface of genus G, then roughly speaking, there would be. The, the minimum number of generators would be quadratic in G, and with a little bit of time and effort, I could draw them for you. Uh, but it will be probably maybe a few minutes, so I don't want to take too much time. Yes? So what happens if F has no boundary? Uh, well, everything of then, this happens. Then uh, you, don't have, you don't have tangles. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, basically what you have tangles then tangos equals links. But nothing you did today uh, does anything. No, no, I mean, so you have filtration, yes. Uh, you have filtration, you have this gray that produced scan algebra. So inside of it, so you have a map, you have a map pi from RRS of F to G R R S F, and then you have G as F to be by definition a pi of S and F, and that's again graded algebra. So there's a point that these, these summands and this graded, uh, associated graded R of the type R S for these simple cases? Well, so I, I, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, basically, I'm, why, I mean, certainly there's a there's a filtration on skin algebra here. Yeah. You basically don't have this curve, and you don't have five curves. You have four curves. Yes. Well, maybe you don't have. I mean, this is close. You don't have four five curves. You have you have three curves, but there's a filtration. You said you did the simple case first. Uh, the sphere disk. Yeah. And and is that is that an ingredient that you use when you get to this? To this uh, well, the reason I did those cases is because those cases don't have those traverses don't have a parallel tensor position. Yes. So once I am out of it. So if I want to do a proof case, the theorem in the in for closed surface, I just start right there. I forget all the thing about tangles. I mean I don't mean yes. <laughs> yes. what you're saying. Yes, but frankly yeah, sure, sure, yes. I mean it could be that you need I need to so make a hole, do this theory and then later fill the hole. I mean sometimes some well, sometimes the arguments like this. Basically but this is not what you're doing. Well, so I mean if you want to prove just just Theorem about those zero devices here. Yes. You don't need to introduce tangles until here, but in a few moments you will have to reintroduce tangles anyway. So, so, the, the, so I, unfortunately I didn't get to the, the, the heart of the proof, but the heart of the proof is you consider this um, the composition. Now I claim that this object, this complicated object, has good gluing properties. So you can consider product in this object by considering individual products in perfect pants and anuli. So you really have to introduce here anuli, not just curves. And then you have to consider product in perfect pants separately, anuli separately, and there's a theorem which which is a gluing theorem for these algebras. <coughs> and so you basically, even if you skip tangles right now, you still have to use tangles later on. Because of course, in, in Andalus and Perot you have to rest like that. And then the idea is that, uh, that the, the, motivating, the motivating idea is that the scan algebra is a little bit like polynomial algebra. And polynomial algebra is I have no zero devices. Any more questions?